No matter how healthy you keep your teeth, your teeth depend on healthy gum tissue to keep them in place. My name is Whitney and I'm a dental hygienist. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. Today, let's talk about the difference between gingivitis and periodontitis. Your gum tissue, also called gingiva, has bone underneath it. And that's what anchors and supports the roots of your teeth. So if you have unhealthy gums, oftentimes your bone won't be healthy either. Which brings me to, what's the difference between gingivitis and periodontitis? There are different stages of gum disease. Let's start with gingivitis. Gingi comes from the word gingiva, which means gums. And itis is the medical term for inflammation of. When you put these two together, it means inflammation of your gingiva, AKA swollen gums. Why does this happen? Why do your gums get swollen? Usually it's because of issues like inadequate brushing and flossing, which causes dental plaque, which is the sticky white film that collects along the edges of your gums that needs to be cleaned off daily. And even your diet can contribute to plaque levels, such as not drinking enough water, having a diet that is high in processed carbs, or not getting enough fresh fruits and vegetables. And even if you're a frequent snacker, because you're probably going to have more bacteria in your mouth than someone who eats less often. So keeping that in mind, like I said, there's all different levels of severities when it comes to gingivitis, gum disease, periodontal disease, or periodontitis. But to put it simply, gingivitis is the lowest stage of gum disease. And at this level, you can still reverse it. So say you had some swollen gums due to buildup on your teeth, and you had the buildup cleaned off by your dentist, and now you're keeping up with your home care routine, brushing, flossing, etc. So now your gums might bounce right back to health. They had gingivitis and they were swollen, but now after a proper dental cleaning and routine home care, they can become healthy and firm. That's great. However, if gingivitis progresses onto periodontitis, that cannot be reversed and may even require surgery or some kind of gum procedure. At minimal, if there's buildup below your gum line, you will need a deep cleaning, AKA scaling and replaning, as well as more frequent recare appointments throughout the year. So again, with gingivitis, only the edges of your gums are red and inflamed. Everything underneath them is still intact and it's generally reversible. But if it progresses into something worse like periodontitis, those tissues start to pull away from your tooth and create pockets underneath your gums. Once we see these pockets, it can mean the bone underneath your gums are shrinking away, being lost, which can lead to bone loss. Once you have periodontitis, it is not reversible. Although it does have a range of different stages from mild to severe, depending on the level of pocketing underneath the gums, the level of bone loss, tissue deterioration, and if tooth mobility is present where the teeth are wiggling, or if structural damage is present. So now that you kind of know the difference between gingivitis and periodontitis, how do you find out if you have it? The common signs are, sometimes but not always, to all of these, bad breath, gums that are tender or sensitive, bleeding when you brush or floss, gum recession, teeth that are loose or shifting, soreness when you bite down, and changes in how your teeth bite together, also called occlusion. Pro tip, if you smoke or use tobacco products, you often will not notice any bleeding, swelling, or redness, even with gum disease. So it's especially important for those who smoke or use tobacco to get regular gum exams to make sure there's no periodontal disease hiding out without you knowing about it. So having said that, for everyone, whether you smoke or not, to get a firm, confirmed answer if you have gum disease or not, schedule a dental appointment. Your dentist or dental hygienist will use a special measuring tool called a periodontal probe to see how deep the pockets are underneath your gums. The deeper they are, the more tissue that is lost from your tooth. Also, in addition to a periodontal gum exam, x-rays will be taken. X-rays are another diagnostic tool to see if bone loss and tartar below your gum line is present or not. And if it is, then it will tell us how much bone loss and tartar there is. Lastly, if losing your teeth due to gum disease isn't scary enough, then listen up. Research shows and proves that severe periodontal disease increases your chance and severity of heart disease and heart attack, high blood pressure, stroke, pneumonia, diabetes, infertility, and possibly even Alzheimer's disease and dementia. All scary stuff. But the great news is that those same scientific studies tell us that improving your gum health and treating periodontitis, you can have a positive impact on your overall health and wellness. So visit your dentist and make sure your gums are being checked. I've had way too many patients with gum disease tell me they've never had a gum exam before until they came to our office. And the unfortunate part is if they would have just had proper gum exams in the past, they could have maybe prevented 
prevented it into turning into a full-blown periodontal disease because they would have had the proper treatment and home care education. So please see your dentist and dental hygienist for routine cleanings. If you haven't been to the dentist in a while and now you're kind of considering going to the dentist, do it. Don't wait because the longer you wait, the more your gums and bone can and will deteriorate. If you do have active periodontitis or heavy tartar buildup, you will likely need a deep cleaning and more frequent cleanings to prevent relapse. So please visit your dentist. I hope this video helped you. It was a lot to say in a small YouTube video, so please educate yourself. If you are interested in learning more about healthy gums and healthy teeth, you can visit my website, teethtalkgirl.com, where there's a bunch of articles and videos relating to the subject of dental and overall health. And until next time, peace, love, and teeth.